welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about shock one of the important di disease uh, in emergency room many patients can come with uh, shock due to various reasons we'll see what are the common uh, clinical presentations and how do we manage that case in emergency room shock is defined as a state of cellular and tissue hypoxemia that is very important so patient is having a cellular and tissue hypoxemia this hypoxemia is mainly due to reduced oxygen delivery so oxygen delivery is reduced you know that oxygen is delivered by blood so there is some problem with the circulation or increased oxygen demand sometimes the demand of oxygen is increased by the peripheral tissues that that much amount of blood is not uh, pumped into that area so that also can produce uh, uh, shock so increased uh, oxygen demand or consumption and inadequate oxygen utilization so three important problems so one is oxygen delivery is reduced and oxygen consumption is compromised or increased oxygen consumption where the uh, supply is less or oxygen is supplied but oxygen utilization in the tissue is compromised so all these things will contribute to shock so you know, shock uh, as such is not only due to the cardiac failure there are multifactorial uh, problems which can produce shock most common cause for shock is always circulatory failure so that is uh, that is this oxygen delivery problem so oxygen delivery is compromised in circulatory failure so circulatory failure is the most important uh, problem that is mostly due to hypotension that reduces the perfusion of tissues there are more uh, four major types of shock that is uh, distributive shock cardiogenic shock hypovolemic shock and obstructive shock so everyone will be knowing about cardiogenic shock that is because of the cardiac failure second when you have hypovolemia that is also due to uh, reduced circulation other things we'll see afterwards so there are lot of other small small causes for shock that also we'll learn uh, during the presentation now we'll see what is obstructive shock obstructive shock means it's a pulmonary vascular problem or pulmonary problem so problem is in the lungs and that uh, you know that uh, during the circulation some part of the blood is going through the lens or pulmonary circulation if there is a block there that will produce obstructive shock in that uh, pulmonary vascular causes most uh, cases of obstructive shock are due to right ventricular failure secondary to massive pulmonary embolism so remember a patient who is having pulmonary embolism so just for example uh, this is the uh, rv from rv blood will go to the pulmonary circulation from pulmonary circulation it will go to the la and lv okay if there is a problem obstruction here so blood cannot go to uh, lv so problem here that that can be acutely due to pulmonary embolism so rv failure occurs ultimately it will lead to the lv failure also because lv is not getting blood so pulmonary embolism is the most common cause in emergency room and patient who is having pulmonary hypertension due to any cause also can lead to uh, pulmonary vascular cause for obstructive shock then other cause are like tension pneumothorax tension pneumothorax means air in the pulmonary cavity increases that produces obstruction to the inflow of the blood to the pulmonary circulation pericardial tamponade from lungs blood cannot go to the heart because the heart is compressed by the effusion or uh, air so uh, so the uh, expansion of the heart is severely compromised so uh, it will not take any more blood so tension pneumothorax pericardial tamponade constrictive pericarditis is also same like pericardial tamponade it will not uh, allow the heart to expand it will not allow the heart to take more blood restrictive cardiomyopathy also same so all these three things are having same uh, problem because from lungs blood has to go to heart where the heart is severely restricted heart expansion is severely restricted heart cannot expand further 
so the amount of blood is coming is low that will lead to reduced circulation now distributive shock is another type of shock it is characterized by severe peripheral vasodilatation so some amount of blood is pumped from the heart like this so here suppose it requires around uh, uh, 80 ml blood so just for example 80 ml blood that normally it going through a uh, artery like this so the pressure is maintained now the pumping is 80 ml but peripheral blood vessels are dilated so the, when the 80 ml coming to this area it is nothing here it was 100 percent occupancy now it may be maybe like uh, 25 percent of occupancy so that will reduce the systemic uh, bp and systemic perfusion so that is distributive shock distributive shock occur primarily due to septic shock you know that any sepsis fever or any sickness will produce peripheral vasodilatation so that will produce severe peripheral vasodilatation severe distributive shock and it is also seen in anaphylactic shock in anaphylactic shock also same thing occurs suddenly blood vessels dilate so a small blood vessel like this suddenly dilates due to some uh, allergy so the percentage of uh, uh, occupancy will come down so the, there will be vascular collapse neurogenic shock also similar uh, similar uh, mechanism but only thing is the causative area in the uh, uh, body spinal cord so spinal cord injury especially in the uh, thoracic area produce autonomic dysfunction and produces vasodilatation and distributive shock adrenal failure again we know that adrenal uh, is one of the important uh, uh, hormone which produces vasoconstriction and when adrenaline is not there you pro it produces vasodilatation so that also can produce a shock that is endocrine shock addison crisis addisonian crisis and sometimes myxedema also can produce hypotension abdominal compartment syndrome that is very very important because uh, uh, in routine uh, clinical practice you may not notice this because abdominal compartment syndrome means normally abdomen you know that there are a lot of blood vessels like this when the blood or whatever it is uh, fluid leaks out to the abdomen due to any reason the expansion of abdomen occurs that further compresses the blood vessels here so this distribution of water to the abdomen itself can produce abdominal compartment syndrome and shock anaphylactic shock we have already seen it is due to allergy now septic shock is one condition where the vasodilatation and vascular leak both produces problem one is vasodilatation so normal artery you can see here so blood is pumping without any problem when the artery dilates like this effective pumping will come down so pumping will come down then next problem is vascular leak so this is the blood vessel so there are le lot of leaky areas here the fluid may go out from the vascular compartment that produces vascular compartment fluid loss and septic shock so septic shock is defined as persistent hypotension requiring vasopressors to maintain mean arterial pressure more than or equal 65 millimeter of mercury and a serum lactate more than 2 millimoles uh, despite adequate volume resuscitation and uh, after uh, adrenaline or noradrenaline infusion so so patient will have hypotension because of the uh, uh, sepsis and mean arterial pressure we are not able to maintain above 65 and lactate levels are high that is because of the anaerobic metabolism uh, which is due to hyperperfusion of the tissues but all these things are possible initially when you give fluids or noradrenaline infusion but even after that even after fluid or noradrenaline infusion if we are not able to maintain uh, the uh, uh, this one uh, then we can call it a septic shock so ideal situation volume resuscitation fails then we are starting noradrenaline that is defined as shock so shock septic shock means hypotension tension we correct try to correct with fluids but bp is not maintained we start noradrenaline so that point we can call it as septic shock so patient requires noradrenaline to maintain the 
mean arterial pressure above 65 that is uh, septic shock in simple words hypovolemic shock you get in lot of conditions especially in emergency room hemorrhages gastrointestinal losses skin losses renal losses third phase losses like uh, uh, post operative trauma intestinal obstruction crush injury pancreatitis high cirrhosis all these things you get hypovolemic shock actually the volume can loss suppose there is a hemorrhage an artery is bleeding so so there is a rupture here artery can go out of the body outside so that produces loss of uh, volume or a patient who is having severe diarrhea vomiting lot of volume is lost that can produce uh, hypovolemic shock so there are lot of conditions which can produce hypovolemic shock but this third space loss means so that is very important all these conditions you are losing water outside the body but third space loss means suppose there is a uh, uh, like pancreatitis lot of fluid is going out of the uh, inflamed area to the abdomen so that is actually fluid is not going out of the body but it, in, it is inside the body but not in the intravascular compartment that is third space loss and hypovolemic shock is one of the common cause for shock in emergency room now cardiogenic shock again we should understand that it is defined as severe depression of cardiac index and sustained systolic arterial hypotension despite an elevated filling pressure then uh, the causes are mainly due to pump failure so ventricular left ventricular lv failure is a most common cause for that ma major cause is ischemic heart disease ischemic heart disease is the major cause but there are lot of other causes also can produce uh, uh, cardiogenic shock whatever it is heart is failed especially left ventricle is failed now what happens if there is hypoperfusion of tissues so if there is hypoperfusion of tissues the cellular hypoxemia will occur that will lead to anaerobic metabolism anaerobic metabolism will lead to lactic acidosis so this is very important whenever patient is having hypotension or hypoperfusion tissue requires oxygen uh, oxygen and glucose metabolism so that will be maintained by an uh, another way of metabolism that is anaerobic metabolism the end product of anaerobic metabolism is lactic acid see lactic acidosis will be the most important laboratory finding of hypoperfusion so any patient who is coming with uh, shock in emergency room we always take an abg and see what is a lactate level and uh, what is a uh, acid base status in that patient so most of the patients who is having uh, shock they can go to metabolic acidosis due to lactic acidosis now other clinical features patient can have hypotension systolic bp less than 100 mm of mercury there can be tachycardia that is a most early finding most important and early finding of any shock so tachycardia can be the cold clammy skin tachypnea rapid shallow breathing drowsiness confusion irritability oliguria so urine output will be less reduced or elevated jvp central venous pressure multi organ failure multi organ dysfunction syndrome because organs are not getting blood circulation and oxygen poor or altered cerebral function hypoxemia hypothermia all these things are the features of uh, uh, shock now this is a chart which explains you all this problem what we have discussed we i am not going to this chart at present because uh, uh, this is available uh, uh, in the slide so you can see it afterwards now there is a index called as shock index it is defined as heart rate divided by systolic bp it has been suggested as such a marker that can be used to predict the severity of hypovolemic shock so it predicts the severity of the hypovolemic shock that shock index if shock index is more than one has been widely found to predict increased risk of mortality and other markers of morbidity so no shock is uh, shock index less than 0.6 mild shock 0.6 to 1 moderate shock 1 to uh, less than 1.4 severe shock more than 1.4 so that is very important it is related to the mortality and some patients may require transfusion transfusion can be iv fluids or blood whatever it is now in hemorrhagic shock it is classified to four major groups so depending on the percentage of loss of volume 
less than 15 percent 15 to 30 percent 30 to 40 percent that ml is given here more than 40 percent so four major groups are there and clinical findings uh, especially patient can have tachycardia narrow pulse pressure mild to moderate hypotension compensatory peripheral vascular vasoconstriction mild mental confusion class 3 hypo hypotension peripheral hypoperfusion mental confusion and last stage is uh, shock and these patients may require blood transfusion okay blood transfusion is li limited only if the uh, hemoglobin percentage is less than 4 gram before that if uh, patient even if the patient is losing blood we should only give fluids iv fluids that is crystalloids and some patients with severe shock we have to go for massive transfusion protocol we'll discuss it some other time massive transfusion protocol means you give one is to one is to one ratio of uh, platelet ffp and uh, uh, hemoglobin Now other lab investigation, sometimes you can see patient can have uh, infection, leukocytosis, anemia, blood sugar should be examined, DK is one of the common cause, peripheral smear, malaria is very important, uh, high hematocrit may suggest hemoconcentration due to hypovolume, somebody is having severe volume loss, even if it is blood, initially there will be losing large amount of volume, so that will produce hematocrit elevation, liver function test, renal function test, INR, PT. Uh, PT and INR, APTT and serum fibrinogen. So, PT INR forms the two, uh, two uh, limbs of uh, intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. Final pathway, you check the uh, fibrinogen level. So, if PT INR both are elevated, PT INR and APTT is elevated, check the fibrinogen level. If fibrinogen level is low, you may have to give cryoprecipitate. And electrolytes, all electrolytes should be examined because uh, electrolyte imbalance will be commonly associated with hypovolemia. D-dimer may be, uh, it may be useful in pulmonary embolism because uh, it has got a negative predictive value. If uh, D-dimer is negative, you can rule out pulmonary embolism. There is importance of D-dimer. Blood, urine, sputum cultures, ABG, you, we have seen that mostly it will produce metabolic acidosis, lactic acidosis. Now another important test, bedside test is capillary refill time. Everyone should know this about this, uh, this one. You press the finger like this, you can see the press the finger like this. Initially you can see paleness, then suddenly uh, remove that. Within two seconds, if it is returning, it is a very good sign of peripheral perfusion. If it is delayed, then it is a very bad sign. It indicates peripheral perfusion is compromised. Now passive leg, leg raising test, you can easily check in your emergency room. We lift the leg of the patient and see whether the BP is improving or uh, if you have a uh, central line or a central monitoring of BP, then it will be very, very useful. Otherwise also, when you lift the limb, if the BP is increasing, that means he is fluid responsive. Okay. I am not going to the details of how to do the test. It is all given here. But remember, this is a very simple test you can do in emergency room. Just lift the leg of the patient, see the BP is improving or not. If the patient's BP is improving, then you can give more fluid. You can that is a sign of uh, uh, like a sign that sign tells you that patient improves after fluid. Okay. Now IVC compressibility is another important uh, uh, marker of uh, hypovolemia. If you are able to compress uh, normally. IVC diameter in many studies have been shown that great predictor of uh, less than 2 cm if it is there on examination that shows uh, 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 then IVC uh, is collapsed and collapsibility greater than 50 percent is a good marker of hypovolemia. So you can see here normally IVC uh, when the fluid is full you can see the IVC is full here IVC is collapsed. So if you give fluid and recheck it sometimes uh, patient improves with fluid okay but there are some other reasons which can also produce ivc compressibility but we are not going to that but whatever it is and uh, in emergency room ultrasound is a very useful tool to make out whether the patient is having uh, volume uh, patient is a candidate for volume resuscitation or not lactate levels uh, we have already discussed that serum lactate is very important so serum lactate is very important because uh, 
um, uh, serum lactate will be elevated uh, in uh, uh, lactic acidosis because of hyperperfusion. So that should be uh, checked. Even an elevated lactate is uh, there in the uh, ABG value that indicates uh, metabolic acidosis due to hyperperfusion. Now investigations, uh, cardiac enzymes, chest x-ray, echo, ECG uh, and point of care ultrasound, all these protocols are very useful in emergency room. Now lactate clearance is very important. Once you find that, uh, found that uh, lactate levels are high and when you give fluid, if the lactate clearance occurs, that indicates the patient is responding to your fluid therapy. So lactate clearance is lactate initial minus lactate after 2 hours by lactate initial into 100. So if there is a good improvement in 10% uh, then that indicates your fluid resuscitation is good. Vasopressors especially noradrenaline is very important. If the patient is having hypotension you are not able to correct with fluid resuscitation 30 ml per kg initially uh, crystalloids then you if the patient does not improve then you go for noradrenaline. Now there are a lot of uh, uh, sympathomimetic agents, we will not be discussing all these things, we normally use norepinephrine. So all the characters are given here, you can check it. Anaphylactic shock, normally we give adrenaline, so adrenaline is, uh, so uh, in, in anaphylactic shock we have to always take care, any uh, emergency we have to take care, uh, airway, breathing, circulation, then, then uh, you go for uh, adrenaline uh, infusion or adrenaline bolus doses adult we give 0.5 ml of adrenaline im now in pregnancy remember pregnancy uh, patients so who when they are lying down straight it can compress all the vessels here ivc can be compressed iota can be compressed but if you ask the patient to lie down little on the left lateral position you can see these vessels are relieved from the compression so that uh, most of the hypotensions, initial hypotensions can be managed by this position ch change in the pregnancy. Now other drugs, we, if the patient does not improve after, even after your initial resuscitation with fluid, noradrenaline and conditions like sepsis, PB adrenalitis, meningococcal infection, you always go for hydrocortisone. And glucagon should be used in patients who is having beta blocker related shock. So good perfusion signs are very important. So CVP can be monitored. Uh, so central uh, superior vena cavity oxyhemoglobin saturation SCV O2 more than 70%. Then CVP 8 to 12 millimeter of mercury. Mean artery pressure more than 65. Urine output is very very important finding in patients who is having a normal urination. 0.5 ml per kg per hour. Decreasing lactate levels. Lactate clearance more than 10%, pH normalizing, improving the level of consciousness, all these things are good predictors of resuscitation. So we have discussed about one important uh, problem that is uh, shock. Shock has got various, uh, uh, various uh, clinical profiles. It can be due to cardiac shock, it can be due to neurogenic shock, it can be due to anaphylactic shock. Whatever it is, when there is a shock coming to emergency room, uh, put two large bore IV lines, try to give fluids and maintain the intravascular volume. Even if the patient is slightly volume overloaded, when you, uh, shock is due to uh, the reduced uh, perfusion of tissues, be mostly because of the reduced intravascular volume. So you give volume resuscitation, noradrenaline, then if the patient is having uh, hypotension because of cardiac failure, start dopamine, or if the patient is having bleeding tendency like uh, hemorrhagic shock, then you maintain the hemoglobin above 7% by giving blood transfusion. Sometimes you, you may have to give massive transfusion protocol. That is uh, 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio of blood, uh, platelets and FFP. Thank you.